Well, hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating this pretty cool fruit juice composite effect, slicing and dicing and making it look real nice in there, covering all the techniques you need to know in Photoshop so you can create that effect as well. Let's jump into Photoshop right now and get this thing started. Alrighty folks, here we are in Photoshop. This is the effect we're going to be creating. Uh, well, this is another example of the effect. We're actually going to be doing the orange juice effect, but you can do it with anything. You could do this with strawberries, you could do it with pineapples, really anything. You could do a mango, any kind of fruit. But let's get started by going File, New, and create a new document. I'm going to drag this down here. A new document, 2560 by 1440. It's just my favorite size working in Photoshop right now. I don't know why. It just kind of is. I'm going to go ahead and create. And uh, we want to do a couple things. The first thing we'll do is establish a, a simple glowing background and we're going to do that by coming down here and hitting this half white half black circle and choosing solid color to create a solid color layer and I'm going to give this a very very subtle orange color so I'm going to go with a very light orangey color maybe something sort of kind of like that and then the nice thing about the solid color fill layer very easy to change later on I'm going to hit the little lock icon and just drag the original background layer down to the garbage I'm going to create a new layer I'm going to name this layer glow to place a nice glow in the middle what I'll do here is use my brush tool I'm going to right click and I'm going to say, you know what, let's reduce the hardness to zero and increase the size eh, just a lot. Let's bump it up to like 650 or something. Now, white is my foreground color. I'm going to click a single time, maybe twice. And then I'm going to grab my regular move tool and I'm going to hit command or control T, which opens up free transform. Maybe I'll zoom out a little bit. Hold down shift and option. That's shift and alt on the PC. And then just zoom uh, or, or scale up, I should say, the, the glow in the middle until it's, you know, reasonable size. Go ahead and commit that change. You can position as close or as far from the center as you like something like that will look good for me here and I'll probably go ahead and reduce the opacity of this glow just knock it down to something subtle 56% opacity is what I'm rolling with here just because I like it all right so for the actual juice effect I have four stock photos now these are Adobe stock photos so I can't just distribute them for free but you can get them on Adobe stock or if you're doing your own type of juice you can go find your own photos or just see what you can find for free online for sure uh, I'm going with a glass of orange juice the great thing about this is you could very easily with hue saturation make it pink for strawberry or yellow for pineapple or green if you're going to do some sort of green fruit maybe an avocado or something like that I don't know uh, or orange well maybe more of a pale orange type color for for cantaloupe or whatever whatever it may be go green and red if you want to go watermelon the point is it's not a glass of water the glass of orange juice is solid you can't see through it um, so that's very conducive to easily changing the color now as soon as I say that I also have a blue water splash now you could go with splashing milk but I just thought the water was a little bit crisper looking and would, would lend a more refreshing looking final image, albeit not as realistic. Um, however, when we're talking about making an image that has slices of fruit coming out of a glass, is realism really where we want to argue? Eh, I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, and then I'm also going to have uh, a full orange, and all I'm going to do is peel the skin off the orange. You'll see how we do that in a second. And then a slice of orange just so I can get the innards of the orange. Now, for the pineapple, I basically had the same thing here. There's some, some milk there, uh, but an inside of the pineapple and an outside of the pineapple and then I use the same a glass of orange juice in the pineapple shot so we're going to begin by dragging in the orange juice I'm just going to drag my stock photo into this now this is isolated over white for sure and it can be whatever you just need to be able to isolate the juice and because it's over white it makes it very easy to go select and select the subject which gives us a great little selection and then I'll probably go select select and mask and just make a couple changes you can see it makes a pretty nice selection but I bump the radius up two or three pixels I'll feather this the edges a little bit and then boost the contrast just to try to peel away any sort of little edges that need to be defringed around the glass and I may even shift the edge back negative 15-20% yeah, or so and I'm going to output this to a layer mask and I will hit OK. You can see we've got a beautiful, simple, smooth, nearly perfect layer mask. And before I do anything else, I want to change the color of the highlights. They're very sort of white bordering on pink, or they look like they have a magenta tinge to them, maybe just because of the color we're working with. So I'm going to add a selective color adjustment layer here, and I'm going to clip it to my orange juice by hitting Command Option or Control Alt G. And I want to work here within the whites, because that's that's what I want to change the color of. I want to remove cyan, therefore making those whites, the white highlights more red. Um, I'll remove a little bit of the magenta, not too much, 
and I'm also going to increase some yellow. So push some yellow into those highlights. After all, it is orange juice, so I'd rather them be a little bit too yellow than not yellow enough. And then I'm also going to boost the blacks maybe like plus 5-6% just to kind of dull and flatten those highlights out just a little bit. Now I could go through here and mask this just to the highlights, but it looks like targeting the whites with this particular cup of juice, it's doing a pretty good job of containing it to just those highlights. If I shut the layer off, turn it on, you can see it looks pretty decent. Now I'm going to collapse my properties panel. I'm going to shift click both of these layers, the selective color and orange juice layer, and hit command or control E to merge them together. It does a couple things. It gets rid of the mask, it just sort of applies it as a destructive edit, which I'm totally fine with here, uh, and it also merges our, our adjustment layer into this layer, therefore rendering the adjustment layer no longer adjustable. All right, let's go ahead and drag in our blue water splash. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to make the blue water splash big enough to sort of cover this document. In fact, I'm just going to stretch it side to side a little indiscriminately, which is fine. I'll just boost it out like that. That's cool. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And what I want to do here is set this to multiply. It's going to drop away all the white. You can see we're left with just really the texture of the water. The blue color is not working for us at all. It's giving us this funky green teal color over our orange juice. So let's begin working with this. I'm going to add a black white adjustment layer. I'm going to clip it to the water. Command option G. That's control alt G on the PC. And I'm going to use here in the preset area of the properties panel for that black and white adjustment layer, the green filter. This is going to give our shadow is a little bit of punch, increase sort of the shape of the water, if you will. I kind of like it. Then I will add a levels adjustment layer. I will clip this to the stack as well. And then I'm immediately going to remove some of the contrast in my shadows. I'll boost the black output point here to, I don't know, around 70 or so. And then I'll boost the black input point up to around 35. And I'll shift my center point to about 1.5 or so. So there you go, about 1.43 looks good. And now I want to start sort of coloring the water to match the orange juice, even if it's just a little bit. Obviously we don't want the liquid to look gray. So I'm gonna go with the color balance adjustment layer. You can really do this any number of ways. This is just how I'm gonna do it for this example. Again, we're gonna clip this to the stack. So we're just colorizing the water itself. And here for the midtones, I'm gonna push a bunch of red into it. Let's just go plus 50, we landed right there on that. I'm not gonna mess with magentas or greens, and I'm going to push a bunch of yellow into the midtones as well. So let's go about negative 30. I'll come up here to highlights. Highlights, I'm going to push a bunch of red into the highlights, maybe 25, 30, something like that. And I'll push a bit of yellow into the highlights as well. Let's say 10, 15. I got a negative 13 there. And then here for the shadows, I'm going to push a bunch of red into the shadows as well. So about plus 50 for the shadows. You can, you can see it's very red, maybe a little bit too red. Let's counterbalance that with giving it a healthy dose of yellow as well. And you can see how this really makes it a kind of a rich orange. I can back out some of that red to kind of flatten the orange a little bit, make it more like a, a very orange juice light or orange juice spritzer kind of looking liquid. I'm going to collapse this properties panel. I am going to select my glass of juice here. I'm going to move it over to maybe about right here. Let's say we want to place the glass of juice there. We'll nudge it downward a little bit. And I now want to mask the bottom of my orange juice glass into the water, which is going to help make this water appear more solid colored because we essentially won't be able to see through it anymore. So I think I'm actually going to drag my orange juice up above the water altogether because I'm thinking I want to try to mask it along maybe this dark shadowy line a little bit. That's going to make it appear as the, as though the splash here, so the, the back side of the splash would be sort of behind the glass, therefore making it look like the glass is sitting here in the middle of this uh, little puddle. And you can pick whatever line you want. Realistically, it's really this edge that we should mask along. Uh, but we'll just quickly mask this in. So what I'll do is I'll add a layer mask and I'll simply use a brush painting with the color black. I'm going to right click, make the brush quite a bit smaller. And then I'll just go through this and it's going to be a little bit of hand labor you can see here. Just quickly painting, adjusting size and hardness of brush as uh, you see fit. And just go through and find the edge that you want and paint your example into place. And there we go. That's pretty cool. I'll zoom out. You can see how it looks like the base of the glass is settling right in there. In there. Uh, part of the beauty of having this mask is we can decide how deeply we wish the glass would be sitting in the water. I can simply unlink the glass from the mask, make sure I select the glass, nope, not double click it, just a single click on the glass, and then grab my selection tool and just start nudging down with the arrow key to set the glass deeper into the water, if you will, and you can see it's peeking out of the bottom, so I can click on the mask and just make sure, I'll make sure we actually click on the mask, there we go, grab my brush tool again, make sure I'm painting with black, and then just go through and, and complete the mask down there. But you can see how now it, we, we almost assume that this liquid is you can't see through it because the glass is just descending into it so perfectly.
Let's go over and open up our paths panel and I'm gonna grab my ellipse tool right here. It's underneath your rectangle tool. I'm gonna make sure that I'm only drawing a path and then I'm gonna zoom in on the glass of juice. And what I wanna do with the ellipse tool is create a simple ellipse, just a simple path that spans the glass of juice, kind of like that. All right, you can choose how much or how little of a curve you have. Maybe I'll go for a little bit more of a curve. All right, once we have our first path, we're going to duplicate the path. Well, before I do that, I'm going to double click and I'm going to save it as path one. And then I'm going to drag it down to the new path icon and I'm going to name it path number two. Well, that's three. There's number two. I'm going to drag it above path one because it's going to go above path one. And then I'm going to grab my path selection tool and click a single time. I've now selected path two here. And I'm going to hold down shift and tap the up arrow key seven times. That's going to nudge this path upward at 70 pixels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you may be saying, oh no, where's our lower path? Well, if I select path one, it's right there. And if I shift and select path two, we can see there's path two. I just want to work on path two right now though. I'm going to hit command or control T and I want to stretch the outer edges all the way to the edges of the glass again. So I'm going to stretch this out just like that. It's almost better if you overstretch a little bit rather than understretch. So if you're just a teeny bit past the glass, that is perfect. All right, that's great. Let's duplicate path number two by dragging it down to the new path icon. Drag this path up, double click. We're gonna name it path number three. Now for this path, we're gonna nudge it 100 pixels upward. So we're gonna hold down shift and tap the up arrow key. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Five plus five equals 10. And 10 times 10 is 100. So we just shifted this up 100 pixels. Hit command or control T. Stretch it out to be the width of the glass once more, right? You know the drill at this point. Voila. We're gonna drag path number three down and drop it on the new path icon. On. drag this path to the top of the stack we're going to name this path number four this is the last path so if you're losing track of what's going on don't worry we're going to cover it all here in just a second i'm going to select this path now this one we're only going to nudge upward 70 pixels again so shift and the up arrow key one two three four five six seven times and once more commander control t as though we haven't done it enough already and just stretch this little ellipse out to cover uh, the entire glass. Let me undo that last move. There we go. Get that back into place. Now, if I sh shift and select all the paths, we have these four seemingly totally random ovals. You'll see how these work in a second. Think of these as placeholders for selections. We're going to be able to easily load them up and get perfect, beautiful selections of our glass. So we'll begin with the bottom two. We're going to command or control click on the thumbnail for path number one. It's going to load it as a selection. And then I'm going to hold down command and shift. And I'm also going to select path number two, right? So we've loaded those two selections. Now I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to drag a selection from sort of the points of both ovals. See how this crosses through? I'm crossing through just the tips of all four of the ovals, right? So just all four of those areas. That's exactly what I'm looking to go through. It, it, you know, the closer you can be to exact, the better, but it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. There we go. Uh, now we've selected too much. So we want to clip our selection to the juice glass. So let's go back to the layers. We have a perfect selection of our juice glass here on the juice glass layer. So hold down command shift option. That's command uh, control shift alt on the PC and click on that layer thumbnail. What that's gonna do is it's gonna save only the part of selection that's over our juice glass since that's what we're selecting right boom look at that and now what we need to do is cut a perfect rounded shallop or scallop whatever it's called I think it's called a shallop in the top of this band if you will so we'll go back to paths and I'm gonna hold down the command and option this would be control alt on the PC and cut path number two from our selection boom just like that and you can see we have this perfect little band that follows our glass now Part of probably what's going to happen here, if I take this and cut a piece of it out, we're probably going to see an extra line missing. Let me just hit layer, new, and say new layer via cut, right? You can see we've got these bizarre shapes appearing. If I shut off layer one, we have this nice cutout of our glass where we can insert a piece of fruit, but we also have this bizarre looking you know, oval on top of it. So I'm going to undo this a couple times. Why, why that's happening is because unbeknownst to us, there is a very tiny selection, so small that Photoshop isn't even displaying it. That's happening above this selection. So we're going to hold down our option key. See how we get that little minus next to our cursor. And we're just going to drag the selection down like that. And what this is going to do is Photoshop saying, any little bit of selection that's underneath this area we're dragging this minus selection, just get rid of that selection. And now if we select our glass of orange juice and go layer new, new layer via cut, bimp, pop that label up onto a new layer and we have cut out 
that little piece of the juice glass. So, all right, so let's go through that process again and cut out the second little label. We'll go back to our paths, hold down Command and Shift, that's Control and Shift on the PC, select both paths three and four, just like that. And then with our rectangular marquee tool, drag that perfect selection, or as perfect as you can make it, over the middle of our ovals, just like that. Then go back to Layers, Command, Shift, Option, that's Control, Shift, Alt, and click on the glass of juice to clip our selection. Go back to the paths, Command, Option, or Control, Alt, and minus path number four to cut that nice rounded edge in the top, and then hold down Alter Option and minus away any bit of selection that's above it. And we have our perfect selection. We're here on the juice glass layer. We can go layer, new, layer via cut, and we have cut out two pieces of our glass of juice. Yeah, I never said it was going to be easy, but boy, is it going to be cool when we get this finished. It's a little complicated, but it's all right. All right, I have these two slices of the glass that we cut out. I'm going to need them later just to create a selection, so I'm going to leave them shut off for now and just sort of stash them away. They'll be helpful for us later. I'm going to select my glass of juice now, and we're going to apply a hue saturation adjustment directly to this glass of juice. I want to kind of orange it up a little bit more. So there we go, hue saturation. This is a totally destructive effect. But again, uh, again, I'm not really too terribly concerned with being perfect when it comes to non-destructiveness. I'm going to go negative 10 on the hue. That's pretty cool. Uh, maybe we'll boost a little saturation into this as well. Should I put some brightness in there? I don't think so. I think I'll leave it at zero brightness. So just a nice, you know, sort of deep orange hue. It gives it a nice, almost rich, smooth color. And what I also, I think I'm going to do is cut each piece of the glass. So right now, all three pieces of glass are in this one layer. So I'll probably go with my poly lasso tool here, and I'm just going to cut the top part of the glass up to its own layer. Right, so we'll go layer, new, layer via cut. And notice also the hotkey, command shift or control shift J. We'll use that from now on. And I'll just call this top glass. And then I'll go back to the layer. I'll select the middle piece here. Command shift or control shift J. And I'm going to name this layer middle glass. And then of course this will be bottom glass. Okay, I'm going to collapse my adjustments panel here just to bias a little space. It's time to get busy with the orange. So I'm going to drag in the orange first. And then we'll worry about the inside of the orange. I like this. Uh, maybe I'll right click on it and just flip it horizontally. And there's kind of a highlight on both sides of the orange, but I sort of like the highlight on this side more to match the highlight on our glass. This is definitely the shadow side of the glass. So we'll see how this works. Maybe I'll make the orange a little bit larger, kind of something like that. And what I'm going to do now is just move this over the glass. Now we can see it's way wider than the glass. I almost want to take advantage of the natural contour of the orange and the glass wraps right around like an orange. So maybe I will actually size this back down to about the size that I need, something kind of like that. And now what I'll do is command or control click on, well, this is the upper piece of orange that I need, so I'm not, I'm not going to use that yet. I'm going to command or control click here on this lower piece of orange, right? You can see we're getting a nice selection of orange, and then I'll simply hit command or control J, and we've popped the piece of orange up onto its own layer. Now, command or control J is not new layer via cut, but new layer via copy, so if I shut that off, we can see we haven't actually cut a chunk out of the orange. But if I select the orange now and move it out of the way, and I turn that layer back on, we have this perfect piece of orange that fills the gap. So I'm going to call this lower orange, and then I'll select the full orange, I'll drag it back into place here, and we'll cut out the piece for the upper piece of orange. I'm going to hit Command or Control T, let's hold down Shift and drag this to make it a little bit bigger. Just like that, make sure it's in place and it can fill exactly what we need it to fill, that looks about right. And then I will Command or Control click here on the second piece of glass that we cut out. We're still in the orange layer, Command or Control J to pop that up, and I'm going to call this higher orange. Now I can get rid of the orange layer altogether. So the stock photo of the orange, I can just drag it right to the garbage. And let's get our layers organized here properly. So we have the bottom piece of the glass, and then we have the lower orange. So I'm going to drag the lower orange down. Then we have the middle piece of glass, which should be next, and then the higher orange, and then the top piece of the glass. So it's just going to be kind of important that we keep all that stuff sort of stacked in place so we don't get too, too confused, because we're going to add more to this here in just a little bit. Okay, so what we'll do now, we'll select the lower orange, and I want to move it a little bit because obviously these slices of orange are moving away from our glass. So I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to tap my left arrow key 12 times to move it to the left 120 pixels. And I'm also going to move it downward 20 pixels. So that's shift and down arrow key twice. For the upper piece of orange, I'm going to move this to the right 140 pixels. So that's 14 taps right while holding shift. 
I lost track of my count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four. And then I'm just going to tap this down 10 pixels, just like that. So essentially, this piece of orange won't be sticking out as far, if you will, as the piece of orange on the bottom. So now what we need to do is drag in our slice of orange and add the inside of the orange right here on top of this slice, the inside of the orange on top of our glass here, on top of the orange here, and on top of the glass on the bottom. So let's drag our orange slice in. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Yep, that looks great. I'm going to drag it all the way up on top. And what we'll do with this is we're going to select the orange here. So I'm going to grab my quick select tool and choose select subject. There we go. You can see we've made a, a pretty rough selection around it. We'll go select the mask. Just check it out. See what it looks like. Looks pretty good. Maybe I'll shift the edge back just a little bit. Uh, I think I am going to go with the selection, not a mask, because I'm going to pop this piece of orange out onto its new layer. I don't want to deal with the layer mask here. So I'm just going to hit command or control J and then I can get rid of the original original orange. Now we have a nice, whoop, right here, we have a nice piece of orange ready to be worked with. Let's save a copy of this orange that's been isolated just in case we do something dumb here and need it. Commander Control J just to create a copy and shut that off. And I'm going to take this now and let's begin working from the bottom up. So we'll, we'll put the piece of orange in place for the bottom of the glass. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag it down to where it's going to go in the layer stack. It's going to go just above bottom glass and I'm going to shut off everything above it just so we can focus on this one thing. I'm going to grab this piece of orange, hit Command or Control T to open up Free Transform, and I'm going to scale it down quite a bit. I'm going to zoom in a little here. And what we want to do is try to align the front middle edge of the orange with about the front middle edge of our juice. Then I'll grab this and I'll flatten it out a bit. I'm going to extend it outward, holding maybe hold down Alt or Option, and extend both sides just like that. Then I'll right click and choose Perspective. And let's go ahead and tilt this back by compressing the back anchor handles. If we just squeeze them together, you can see, there we go, it looks pretty good. Right click again, choose scale. Let's scale this straight down, something right about there, and then extend both sides of the orange outward, just like that. Something about there I think will look approximately right. It's almost better if you overextend the orange a little bit because we can always mask it back a little bit. Just very subtly create our edges. If you don't stretch it far enough, it'll never quite look right. So let's go ahead and commit that change. Maybe nudge it downward just a little bit so we have a perfect edge of orange. We can always shadow it up a little bit, clean it up a little if it needs to be. And then I think I'm going to call this layer flesh uh, for flesh of the orange. It sounds a little gruesome, but it works for us here. I'm going to turn on the lower orange and we're going to simply duplicate this flesh layer up by holding down alt or option, drag that layer up, and then we'll move it over into place. Now, because of the perspective changes here, every one of these oranges is going to have to be free transformed and just adjust it a little bit. Command or control T. Let's stretch this over just a little bit. It may be helpful to go view and shut snapping off for this little exercise. Just it'll give you a little bit more control. There we go. We got the top piece of that slice of orange. Let's turn on middle glass and duplicate the flesh of the orange up by option or alt dragging that up. You can see here we need to adjust the piece of orange again. Command or control T. Let's stretch this bad boy out. Something something a little like that. Maybe I got to go a little further. Remember, we can always, it's easier to take it back a little bit if we need to than have to go and continually restretch stuff. All right, let's turn on higher orange and let's option drag our flesh of the orange up once more. I'm going to bring it over, put it in place. You can see it's, it's pretty easy, but look at how much it is just building out this effect and selling what's really a totally fake effect, but it's, it's borderline believable at this point. Turn on the top glass and now we're really starting to look like we have slices of orange coming out of our glass. Now, before we go any further, I want to provide some space between the pieces of glass. The thing that's looking most fake right now is not the fact that there's no shadows, although shadows would help. There should be a little bit of space where these slices of orange are coming out. So let's select the top piece of the glass, the top slice of orange, and the mid slice of glass and lift them up a little bit. So here's top glass and I'm going to select all the way down to middle glass. And then I'm going to grab my move tool and I'm going to hold down shift and I'll tap the up arrow key. I don't know, once, twice. Yeah, we'll go like two times, something like that. And then I want to select the top glass, the top flesh of the orange and the top side of the orange. And I'll move this up one, two times as well. Nope, that's the wrong way. We just want to go just the top of the glass and go about 20 pixels up there as well. Now when we add our shadow, it's really going to look pretty realistic. I'm looking at it. I might move all of this stuff, top glass down to middle glass. I might nudge it down 10 pixels. I think that might look a little more realistic once we add the shadows. Now, how are we going to create the shadows, you might say? Well, it's going to require creating more layers. We're actually done with our libraries up here. Uh, let's go ahead and 
go back to our paths and load path number one as a selection right there. That's great. And then I'm going to go back to layers and I'm going to create a layer where it should go if this slice of orange was casting a shadow across the bottom piece of this glass. So it should be just above bottom glass, right? So I'm going to go new layer and I'm going to call this shadow. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this with black. Edit, fill, contents, black. Hit OK. Then I'll hit Command or Control D to deselect. And I will go filter. I'm going to say blur, Gaussian blur. And let's blur this. I don't know. Let's go like eight pixels. Something like that should be good. Now I'm going to hit Command or Control T. I am going to move this over. We're going to begin moving it into place. I'm most concerned with the shadow being right here, like meeting up with the corner or the, the very edge of our slice of orange and where it runs into the, the flesh of the glass, if you will. I'm going to actually commit this change temporarily because I actually want the, the glass, or I'm sorry, the shadow to be above the bottom piece of glass and that flesh. That way, if the shadow sort of slides over this way, you can see it would still be casting the shadow on that piece of orange there. I don't know that we're really going to be throwing the shadow much that way, but it's good to have options. I'm going to hit Command or Control T. We're going to right click and choose Distort, and I'm going to pull the front corner down like this, right? So what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to pull this shadow out and create this shadow that really falls away from the piece of orange. Then I'm going to pull it out. That way you can see we're really expanding the shadow. I need to make sure that the edge of shadow lines up as naturally as it, as it should over there. Something like that maybe going to pull it a little bit more this way. I think I'm going to zoom out a little bit more because I'm going to pull the shadow down a little bit more. So it's kind of a, a push and pull. You're going to tug it back and forth until it looks, just until it looks about right, has good fall off. Something like that I think will work. I'm going to look at what's going on with the shadow right here on this very edge. I should probably nudge it to the left just a little bit. Maybe something like that will be good. Now obviously it looks very unrealistic for a number of reasons. Number one, it's shooting way off the edge of the glass, but also it's solid black. In this case, the, the, the shadow should be really not black, but very, very, very dark orange. So we'll make a very dark orange shadow by hitting Command or Control U, which is going to open hue saturation. We're going to colorize this bad boy. I'm going to push it to the hue at about 15. So you can see we're hanging out in the orange slash reds. Uh, let's go like 100 on the saturation front. And then the brightness will set to about 20. You can see it's very much red. Maybe we'll push it down to like 15. Eh, maybe 10. Eh, let's go 13, 14, something like that. We can always reduce the opacity a little bit. And then what I'll do is I will command or control click the bottom of the glass right there. And also the flesh of the orange on top of it, command shift to add to that selection. And then I'm going to create a layer mask right here on the shadow layer by hitting the new mask icon. And now our mask is just cast perfectly on the glass. At this point, we could go in and create a second shadow if we wanted. I'm not going to do it for the sake of saving time in this tutorial, but just know you can do that as well. Now I'm going to duplicate the shadow by alt or option clicking and dragging it all the way up to just beneath the higher orange. I'm going to select the mask by actually clicking on it. See the white outline around the mask. That means we're working in the mask, not the layer. And I'm going to fill this with white. I'm just going to go edit, fill, contents, white, and hit OK. Now what I'll do, I'll make sure I select the layer itself again, Command or Control T and right click and choose, hey, just flip this horizontally. And then I'll position this over here. And maybe what I'll do is I'll rotate it a little bit. I'll just kind of finesse it a little bit, get it right where I want it to be for this particular shadow. There we go, something like that. And then I would now cast that shadow on middle glass and the flesh of the middle glass by command shift clicking on both of those layer thumbnails. And then here on this layer mask, it might actually be easier just to drag this whole stupid layer mask right to the garbage. Yeah, we'll delete it and then hit the new layer mask icon. And there we go. We have the shadow cast just like that. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. The, the shadows might be a bit intense, and that might be a bit of an understatement. In fact, the issue may be that they're just too, uh, too much of an angle downward. So here's how we'll correct it. Let's work on the top shadow real quick first. I'm going to de-link it from its mask, select the shadow itself, hit Command or Control T to bring up Free Transform again. We have the center anchor point. We can drag it over here because we know that we want this to be our fulcrum right there on the corner. And I'm going to just then tilt this upward. So you can see we're getting more of that sort of faded edge of the of the shadow as it just drops off uh, much more beautifully, much more naturally like that. And you can see there we need to go ahead and mask away some edge of the top fleshy part of the orange. We can clean that up and make it look realistic. Just one second. Let's do it here with the bottom shadow as well. I'm going to unlink it, select the shadow, Commander Control T, move our anchor point over to the rotation, sort of the fulcrum. And then I'll tilt this upward a little bit more. 
maybe something a little bit like that. And I should nudge it over a little bit, down a couple. I'm just watching how the shadow is coming out of that corner. That looks a bit better. All right, let me zoom in. Let's do this real quick here. Clean up this edge. So this, that light edge is going to be very noticeable, very bad looking. Where it is, it's right here on this piece of the flesh. And actually, it's not on that piece of the flesh. If we take the flesh of the orange, and we might not have the mask at all. If we simply take it, use the move tool, and nudge downward one pixel, two pixels, no, probably one pixel, that's going to help clean that up a lot. It's still not 100% perfect, but leaving it like that, it'll be a lot, much less noticeable than it was before. And to cap these shadows, we want to place a shadow underneath uh, the glasses, that uh, just a slight shadow that's being cast on the surface of the two orange slices that are that are kind of shooting their way out. So we're going to go back to paths, and I'm going to command or control click to load a path number four, and then we'll come back up here, and this shadow is going to be on top of the flesh. So I'm going to say, yep, add, go ahead and add a layer. We're going to name this layer shadow as well. I'm going to fill it with black by going edit fill, and from the drop down menu, choosing black and hitting OK, and then command or control D to deselect. Now to get the same color orange, we can use that same command U would open up hue saturation, but command option U would open hue saturation and apply the last used uh, settings, which would be colorized at 15100 and a lightness of 14, which is exactly what we have for our shadows. And then I'm going to go filter. I'm going to say blur. I'm going to say Gaussian blur. We probably don't want to go eight here. We probably want to go more like four, something like that, contain it a little bit more. And then I'm going to just nudge this and move it into place. So I'm going to say right about there should probably be my shadow. And what I'll do before I mask either of these, just to keep this simple, I'll drag this, uh, I'll, I'll copy this shadow down by holding down Alter Option and dragging it down above the flesh. So this flesh down here, we need a shadow being cast onto that flesh. So I'll take this shadow and I'll just drag it down and I'll kind of position it where it sort of kind of needs to go, something like that. Now these both need to be masked. We can use a variety of masks. It'd probably be easiest just to clip them to the fleshy orange by hitting Command Option G, just like that. We clip it right to the flesh. And the same thing here with the top shadow, Command Option, or it'll be Control Alt G for those of you on the PC. And then we should probably reduce the opacity quite a bit. Maybe we'll knock it down to like, I don't know, 40%, something like that. Eh, 40 is not quite enough. Let's go 65. I don't know if 65 is even enough. Let's go 85. Yeah, something like 85. I think, you know what? I think they might need to be blurred a little bit more. Let's take the second shadow down to 85, see what it looks like. Yeah, I think these shadows look a lot better if we blur them. So let's go filter and just apply another four pixels of Gaussian blur. Yeah, I think that's a lot better. Filter Gaussian blur, voila, something like that. And you can see now we're, we're building out a, a relatively realistic looking effect. I'm, I'm just obsessing over this. Let's go down to 75% for these two shadows. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better. And at this point, let's do some dodging and burning. So I'm going to create, well, I'm going to get rid of the orange and the two slice layers here. We're finished with them. Let's create a new layer up here. I'm going to call it affectionately DNB for dodge and burn. We will go edit, we'll go fill, and we'll choose to fill this with a 50% gray. And I'm going to set this to the blend mode of overlay. Now, this, what we're going to do is, is some global dodging and burning and also really kind of clean up the edges and give them more shape. So let's grab our dodge and burn tools. Whoop, that's blur, smart, smudge, sharp, and right down here. I'm going to begin with the burning. So what I'll do here, I'm working with mid-tone range, 90 pixel brush tip with a soft edge. I'll probably be pushing it up and down quickly with my square bracket keys, just changing the brush head size. And an exposure of 20%. So mid-tone's at 20%. That's really what you need to know here. And what we'll do here is maybe I'll just darken up kind of some of the shadowy parts of the, the juice splash, add a little bit of shadow there. Come in here, touch up the shadow just directly underneath the slices and directly between the cuts in the glass, kind of something like that. I'll come into the juice up here, come down the front of the cup like that. Oh, I should probably just make the brush bigger and do a clean pull through like that. Uh, essentially, I'm trying to make the slices of the orange match the, the highlight and shadow on the cups as well. That's just something I'm thinking about. I might zoom in here and with burning, you can go over and just burn the very edge of the glass just to give it a more realistic uh, edge, make it look like there's actually, it's, it kind of rounds underneath there, make the cut look a little bit more natural. You can do the same with the slices of orange. We can also add highlights to the top parts of these slices. That can help to make them look a little bit more realistic. So we'll do that in just a second here. Maybe also I'll add a little shadow around where the, the water sort of splashes up around the glass. Now, again, if you're if you're doing this for real, do a little bit more of a, a careful, loving job for your, for your shadows than I just roughed in there. Then what I'll do is I will switch over to the dodge tool, and I'm going mid-tones at 20%. Again, I'm going to zoom in. Uh, actually, before I do any of the detail work, I'm going to – let's just go ahead and boost out that highlight, boost up the highlights on the edges of our orange on the cup as it comes through there. Great. 
maybe down here to the front center of our juice splash. And then I'll zoom in and I will touch up the top edges of the slices and the cup really quickly here as well. And again, the, the, the object is just build out and influence what will look like shape on that edge to help convince people that, hey, this is not just an optical illusion. This was for real. Something like that's probably about great. I'm gonna paste in some text here that I got from the pineapple juice, and we will say not pineapple juice, but orange juice, and this text should probably be a different color. So maybe what we'll do is we'll sample like this orange off of the glass. And because we have a text layer here selected, we can use the hotkey option delete. That's alt backspace on the PC. And we can just fill our text with the color we've selected. And I think I want the simply and juice to actually be behind the top of the glass. So I'm gonna drag these down and then I'll drag these over somewhere, maybe right around here, maybe something like that is cool. What I will do here is apply a couple global adjustments with adjustment layers. So we'll open up adjustments once more and I will add a color lookup table. And the, the LUT that I'm looking for, it's a default with Photoshop. It's the Fuji F125 2395 Kodak right there. It gives us just this nice like faded, it just, I don't know, it just works for this kind of thing. It makes it look really nice, really smooth, um, very much like get in my mouth kind of looking thing. Then I'm going to fade it a little bit more using a curves adjustment layer here. What I'll do is I'll boost the shadows a little and then I'll pull a little bit into those shadows just to kind of enrich them a little bit. You can see here's before our global color treatment and then after makes it a little bit less arguably natural looking. But again, we're talking about an image that if if we're arguing about how natural it is, we probably have bigger problems. As I'm looking at this, I should probably reduce the opacity of both of these shadows. So I'll select both those shadows. Let's knock these down to about 85 as well. Maybe we'll knock them down eh, yeah, a little bit more. Maybe I'll go 65. How does that look? Maybe a little bit more now, nah, probably 65, 70, something, something around 70, I think will work for us. And that right there is pretty much it. You can go in, you can clean up any little selections. I would probably spend a little bit more time right there on that one little spot. I would spend more time with the dodging and burning around the edges to make it look perfect. Clean up some things like that, maybe perfect the shadows a little bit more. But this is the essence of how to create this kind of sliced fruit juice composite right here in Photoshop. And there you have it. You can see it's it really doesn't all come together until right there when it all comes together and looks great as you begin building out the depth of the shape, adding shadows and dodging and burning and all sorts of stuff like that. It's a lot of sort of tricks of the mind that you have to play to make a two-dimensional object look rather three-dimensional. But we covered all here in this tutorial. If you do create this effect, I would love to see what you created. Make sure you upload it to Instagram. Tag me in the Instagram post. My Instagram handle is at tutvid. I try to respond to, like, and comment on every image uh, where I'm tagged. But I'm actually, you got to actually tag me in the image, not just a little uh, sort of caption because the tag in the image never goes away and I never lose it in my notifications. That's long story short there. Um, so, for taking a look at masking and building out fake, fake and faux 3D effects and masking and perspective changes and all sorts of different things that we covered here today in Photoshop. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do. And this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.